Hey, Michelle, uh, Dennis Feidner, CFO, on the go. And I was on the go all day yesterday, so I'm sorry I didn't get this to you yesterday. But anyway, hey, so um, scheduling is in part of the course, so you don't have to buy estimating to get it. So here's here's the scheduling. I just brought up a schedule. It's a commercial job. It could be a house. It doesn't make any difference. Similar to Microsoft Project, you do have task numbers, so you don't have to type in the descriptions. This is the description of the work. And then the duration in days that it's going to take. And then what kind of task is it? Is, are we doing the item? You know, this is a work item for us to do. Is it an item that's subcontracted uh, or down about? Oh, I don't have one on this. I can actually, oh, here, number eight, uh, owner selection. So they're paint color selections. So that's kind of shows up as a task for the owner. Uh, and then the fixed date that they absolutely have to have that. So this is how you do it. And then similar to a uh, project, um, and not one on there, so hang on a second. Um, Go back to this one right here. There's a predecessor item. Um, you know, we can't start that until the mobilization is done. So very similar to project, but not as difficult to use uh, because once you get these set up, you can usually use them over and over again. So if I go to an item back here, look at the grill, I find a subcontracted item, this one right here, and I hit the button for sub, I can see who the sub is on that because I've assigned them to that job. And you're probably going, well, yeah, I already knew that, but why do I want to do that? I'll show you in a second. Uh, then you're going to get the Gantt chart that you can share with the owner. Uh, if you want to put your employees on there, you can list employees that are going to work on there for that job. There's a quick little recap uh, by job. We have a whole bunch of jobs going on. But I want to close that because here's where it really pays to use it. And it's this one report right here. Um, so I'm not sure how you do this in your company today, but I imagine somebody's making a whole lot of phone calls or radio calls. So I am going to do for one subcontractor, subcontractor number 12, which is my electrical guy. I just happen to know that. So what I got from, from updating all my schedules on the projects that are going on is Samson Electrical is going to get this project notice, either emailed to him or faxed to him. And it's going to tell him that he needs to be on these three jobs doing these tasks of work for these many days of what his schedule is for. And I want him on starting on this date and finishing on this date. And so typically what our home builders, uh, especially custom guys, uh, or GCs will do is they'll do this on Friday around lunchtime. They'll get their schedule updated from what's been, happened in the field for the week. They'll produce their new schedule. They'll produce these project notices and then send them out to their subs. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, I've seen most people do it actually that way. The other way to do it is um, there's a little sh other thing called the subcontract call sheet. I'm just going to run this for all the jobs. Um, so in this case, same information, different format. So uh, this is a sub sight line excavating. Here's my Samson Electrical again. So uh, a lot of times what people will do is they'll have this, and they'll give this to somebody in the office, uh, administrative assistant, receptionist, uh, project engineer, I don't know, somebody, uh, and say, okay, I want you to make some phone calls. I want you to call all these subs, ask for this person, dial this phone number, and advise them that this is when they're expected to be on these jobs. And they basically take uh, two highlighters, a green one for the ones that they accept that they will be there, and then some other color, don't really care, blue, orange, pink, uh, for the ones that they're not going to be able to meet. And those are the only ones that somebody has to follow up on. But this all can be done by somebody at a much lower uh, pay rate uh, than the project manager. But this can all get done uh, electronically as well. So that's that. Real quick look at estimating. Uh, it's something you can absolutely absolutely add later um, see what I have here get the right format I want so here's my general con conditions there's you know all the things I need for general conditions these are templates that I've got built for site work you know I'm using an excavation sub so I've taken his price uh, I'm actually gonna do some of these items myself so I've, I've got detail and once I'm done with that, I can now move all my cost out to the budget. Uh, you can print a proposal. They're not as fancy, but we can probably modify one the, the way you want it. Uh, I can print my subcontracts, and I can print my purchase orders uh, based on the quantities I have in my bid. So right here, if you look over here, I've uh, selected the vendors. So in this case, just as an example, this excavation sub uh, gave me a quote for $1,100. So I will now print a subcontract for site line for $1,100 for job number two to do the site work with your verbiage on it, 
Uh, it's a format that you can change or we can change, but it'll look just the way yours does now. That is why uh, a lot of people use it. Now, I'm not sure, I should remember this, but I don't, uh, how much of the work you do yourself, but typically uh, most of our custom guys and home builders only do a few items themselves and they sub everything out. So this is kind of a format that you would use uh, if you're subbing everything out. This is where I take, I'm gonna take three prices for concrete sign. You do that on every item. And the only one that counts is the one where I put a one in here. And now it's gonna print a subcontract for this guy or woman for $1,400 and it's gonna to go to BEI Concrete uh, and it's a subcontract. And so, uh, pretty nice. Uh, it's something you can always add later. You can always enter your budgets in uh, manually in the budget screen. Not a big deal. If you're doing an Excel, you can almost sometimes copy and paste them in. So anyway, that's a quick update. Uh, the scheduling is included, so you don't have to worry about that. And the estimating is something you can add now or you can add later. It's up to you. Anyway, thanks, Michelle.